Which Arnold Schwarzenegger movie inspired the creation of Coming to America? What illegal thing did Wesley Snipes do to Eddie Murphy to land the role? And how did Arsenio Hall and Eddie Murphy end up getting hurt on the set? Hi, I'm Dylan, and you're watching Awesome Movies. Unlikely Inspirations Did you know that Ryan Coogler pitched a Coming to America sequel before he directed Black Panther? That's right. Coogler wanted to make a sequel in which Michael B. Jordan would have played the son of Eddie Murphy's Prince Akeem. However, Murphy was against the idea, as the story would have mainly focused on Jordan's character. If you're gonna make a sequel to one of the most beloved comedies of the 1980s, it needs to focus on the stars that made it a hit in the first place, right? That being said, Coogler's pitch seemed to plant the idea for a sequel in Murphy and Arsenio Hall's heads. They had no interest in making one beforehand, but then Murphy saw Terminator Genesis, and the rest is history. I know what you're thinking. How could an ill-fated, or should I say dark-fated, Terminator sequel inspire Murphy to make Coming to America too? According to Murphy, seeing a digitally de-aged Arnold Schwarzenegger doing his thing gave him an idea for a flashback scene to include in a new Coming to America movie. After that, it was off to the races. The cast and crew didn't have to travel too far in order to create the fictional African country for the sequel. As it turns out, casting Rick Ross in the movie was a wise move. The rapper let them use his swanky mansion in Atlanta, Georgia to create Akeem's luxurious palace, and the surrounding land made for a suitable stand-in for Africa. The mansion contains over 300 acres of land, so it wasn't too hard for them to recreate the jungle. Once the filmmakers found some antelope to let loose on the property, it looked pretty similar to the African plains. The filmmakers also hired costume designer Ruth E. Carter to bring more African flavor to the movie. The Oscar winner worked with a designer from the South African-based Maxhosa clothing brand to create the bold and colorful clothing that the Zamunda royalty wears in the film. Overseeing the fashion sure sounds like a lot of fun, but the makeup process is a whole other story. The Horrors of Makeup if you're a fan of the original Coming to America, then you remember the host of wacky side characters played by Eddie Murphy and Arsenio Hall. Who could forget the Queen's barbers who spend their days arguing about boxing and Frank Sinatra? Or how about Murphy's almost unrecognizable portrayal of Saul, their Jewish customer? Heck, there's a reason why the band Sexual Chocolate has inspired everyone from Mark Henry to CeeLo Green. Murphy and co. must be thrilled that these goofy minor characters have made an everlasting impression on movie fans, but it came at a cost. Bringing them all to life meant that the actors had to wear lots of makeup and prosthetics, which took hours to apply. All of those characters return in the sequel, which meant that the film's two leads had to spend hours at the makeup table all over again. Needless to say, the experience was grueling for the stars, so much so that Murphy has said he's officially retired from donning makeup in future films. Sorry everyone, if Murphy is indeed done with wearing makeup, that means we won't get to see another Nutty Professor sequel. And if that's not bad enough, did you know that a Nutty Professor cameo was scrapped from Coming to America? The original Coming to America features cameos from Trading Places Randolph and Mortimer Duke, proving that both films are set in the same world. Murphy wanted to do something similar in the sequel. However, everyone opted against it as the prosthetics and makeup would have cost too much money, and the payoff might not have been worth it. Look on the bright side though, at least the Coming to America sequel attracted some top-notch comedic talent to make up for the lack of cameos from the Eddie Murphy cinematic universe. Finding the right roles for the stars Eddie Murphy originally wanted Tracy Morgan to play his son in the movie. However, that idea was quickly shot down after he realized that he and Morgan are almost the same age. Who is gonna believe that? Instead, Morgan landed the role of Uncle Reem, which proved to be a better suit for the 30 rock star. In an interview with Digital Spy, Morgan said that he was able to channel his own uncle in the role, which brought some depth to his performance as the character reminded him of his real-life family member. A family member with a very groovy name, I might add. I looked in the mirror and I felt Uncle Reem was in there. He derives from my uncle, my real uncle named Fatty Love. I loved Fatty Love because he loved me. He taught me a lot. He's my guardian, he noted. According to Morgan, the lessons Reem teaches his nephew in coming to America aren't entirely removed from his actual experiences, though he admitted that he didn't deviate from what was written in the script. While Morgan mined from his own memories to give a memorable performance, one of his co-stars may have gone to some extreme lengths to make an impression on the filmmakers. The hostage situation. They say good things happen to those who wait. However, they can happen quicker if you're a legitimate badass who knows how to scare people into speeding up the process. The latter is how Wesley Snipes allegedly landed a key role in the Coming to America sequel. But before we get to that, let's take a fun trip down memory lane for a second. Back in the 1980s, Wesley Snipes was still a relatively unknown actor who had yet to find success with movies like White Men Can't Jump, Demolition Man, and Blade. 
Back then, he was still auditioning for supporting roles, and one of the parts he chased was the role of Daryl in Coming to America. Snipes was beaten by Eric LaSalle in the end, but he wasn't willing to take any chances the second time around. In an interview with Comics Beat, Snipes said that he held Murphy hostage and extorted him for the part of General Izzy. Of course, it's more likely that he was offered the role after working with Murphy and director Craig Brewer on My Name is Dolomite. Then again, Snipes' recollection of the events is the more interesting story, so let's just believe him. Maybe Murphy wasn't actually kidnapped, but he arguably caused the most distress during the film's production. Onset Injuries Wesley Snipes is known for his physical performance and sublime fighting skills, but the same can't be said about Eddie Murphy. Unfortunately, Arsenio Hall was on the receiving end of his co-star's maneuvers, and he didn't exactly walk away from the situation unscathed. In an interview with Good Morning America, Hall said that they were filming a fight scene that was supposed to have their stuntmen feel the brunt of the physicality. However, Murphy slipped as he went to perform a fake kick on Hall and ended up striking his friend by accident. According to Hall, Murphy kicked him so hard that his co-star's foot was sore the next day. The good news is that there were no hard feelings between the pair following the incident. In fact, Hall said they had a ball making the movie together, so that's a relief. But Murphy didn't get let off the hook that easily, at least not in Karma's eyes. His daughter, Bella, caused a couple of mishaps during the shoot, and Murphy felt her wrath. There was one scene where she accidentally hit her old man so hard with the bow staff that she feared she'd lost him to the angels. Here's what she had to say about the traumatic experience. I saw his life flash before his eyes and we were just frozen there and I was like, what's about to happen? And Craig Brewer yelled cut and after my dad was like, you're grounded. Bella didn't actually get grounded in the end and her dad lived to tell the tale. They're probably laughing about the incident as we speak. Don't you just love a heartwarming family story? What a perfect way to end this video. But now it's time to hear from you. Are you looking forward to the long-awaited sequel to the 80s cult classic? Do you think Wesley Snipes really took the main star hostage? Let us know in the comments below. And while you're at it, be sure to check out our other Coming to America videos.